Good morning. It is Monday, December 15th, 2025. We have a very serious weather pattern that is developing right now across the Pacific Northwest, including for California, but it's going to get even more serious by the end of this work week into next week as we have a big storm system that is going to be moving across the Great Lakes into the Northeast, followed by serious warmth that is going to be plaguing much of the Midwest and the Deep South for much of Christmas week. So in this video, we'll be breaking down all those details. So here's a look at the current satellite imagery across much of the lower 48. And as we can clearly see here, definitely a lot of active weather impacting much of the Pacific Northwest, including for Oregon and Washington, and even impinging on parts of Northwestern California. But that first system isn't going to do a whole lot to us for Wednesday, it's really going to be the weekend and beyond where we're going to need to keep an eye on much of the West for significant rainfall and flooding, including the potential for landslides, while much of the country here is going to look at some much quieter weather as we go into the weekend into Christmas week, all thanks to a ridge of high pressure. So now you're probably wondering when that active weather will be really impacting much of California and Nevada. Oregon and Washington, even so, Washington and Oregon are theoretically getting quite a bit of rainfall. And when another snowstorm will be impacting much of the Great Lakes region. So looking at the 500 millibar height anomaly forecast, this is showing which areas are seeing warmer than normal temperatures in general. Anything here in orange and red really illustrates above average heights in the atmosphere, which means air is warmer than normal and that's going to be sloshing its way into the midwest eventually but not right away it's going to take its own sweet time of actually getting well established because on the ensemble forecast here's that next storm system that is going to be impacting much of the great lakes here you can clearly see this for thursday morning on the 18th day of december so in about three and a half to four days that's that storm system that's going to bring a lot of snow we'll actually look at the precipitation forecast here in just a little bit on this but the ensemble model from the euro is highlighting that system quite well but after that moves out yes the whole pattern is going to be changing here what I really wanted to illustrate here is on the ensemble, very zonal flow here. We're not seeing a very meridional flow where we see a big old fat ridge across the west, big trough in the east. We're not seeing this type of pattern, and instead we're seeing more of a zonal flow here cutting kind of across the country where we have a colder than normal air across much of Canada and warmer than normal air across the Midwest and the Deep South. And anything in between, you're not looking at very much in the way of extreme weather, although some passing storm systems might make things a little bit extreme. And then the pattern becomes more meridional this time, but only favoring the west with the trough and a ridge in the east and even in the midwest here. So in about 10 days here on Christmas Eve, yes, big, big ridge across the high plains, the Great Lakes and the Deep South. This is going to bring in some much warmer weather and that continues all the way into Christmas Day and even into Friday and Saturday with that ridge there across much of the Midwest. So now, what does this mean for the surface? Well, let's take a look here first at the Pacific Northwest because this is where it's going to be serious for the time being. We're looking at repeated storms that are going to deliver some significant rainfall, more additional landslides, mudslides, rock slides, anything that has to do with land masses moving around. That's what we're seeing out of these storms, including the risk for river flooding, small creek and stream flooding, and street flooding as well. This is pretty bad, okay? And I'm not joking around when I say it's pretty bad because this is just the beginning of what will be a deluge of more significant rainfall in weeks to come. All right, so as we go into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you can see that storm falls apart, but look at more rainfall for Oregon and Washington, of course, and more high elevation snowfall, even including for parts of California here for Wednesday. I mean, it's going to be literally north of I-80, where I think the most rainfall will fall. That includes for Ukiah as well as Eureka. Crescent City, you're going to get the more significant rainfall out of that storm system. And of course, in Oregon and Washington, like Seattle, Portland, boy, you are going to be looking at some significant rainfall and strong winds with that storm. 
This is the same storm, by the way, that's going to wreak havoc in the Great Lakes as we go into Thursday and Friday here. And in fact, as we fast forward, we can see that storm system taking shape there across much of Wisconsin into the Midwest here. You can see some showers and eventually there is a risk that there will be some severe weather with the storm system as we go into Thursday. And this is for Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon. We may have to live stream on that because I'll be available here in the home weather office to go live if necessary on this storm system with some heavy snowfall as well in Wisconsin and Minnesota with that. But look at while we're keeping an eye on a storm system in the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, well, our attention is going to have to be focused too on Washington and Oregon with another atmospheric river striking those areas on Thursday. So just a really active weather pattern really setting up by the end of this week into the weekend. And so by Friday and Saturday, yeah, look at this. This is significant rainfall, heavy snowfall as well in parts of the Great Lakes on the backside of that storm system. That moves through pretty quickly, but look at more rainfall and active weather will continue there over the Pacific Northwest and California. By Sunday and Monday, more rainfall, heavy snowfall for the Sierra, mainly for the higher elevations because this is going to be a warmer storm system. But of course, more snow for the Cascade Range of Oregon and Washington into Minnesota, not Minnesota, into uh, western Wyoming as well as Idaho and Montana. These areas getting a lot of snow. That's going to continue all the way into the middle of next week with more rainfall, more active weather looks like. According to the GFS model here, highlighting that pretty darn well with more snowfall potentially for the northeast. So let's take a look now at how much snowfall could you see over the next 300 hours here or 360 hours on the European Ensemble Prediction System. And so as we take a look here for the mountains of the Sierra, we're looking at anywhere between three to six feet of snowfall actually probably locally higher in some areas. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, some areas here could get 15 feet of snowfall above 10,000 feet, possibly 30 or 40 feet of snowfall across the Cascade Range of Oregon into British Columbia, Canada. So keep that in mind. But really lackluster snowfall here in much of the Midwest and the Deep South, and that is all because of the ridge. Keeping things warm, keeping things quiet other than that storm system that moves through on Thursday. But after this Thursday, it is looking pretty darn dry and quiet there, even for the Great Lakes and even for the Northeast. So you better enjoy this while it lasts because once the pattern really flips, it's going to flip pretty darn hard. So now let's take a look at those rainfall amounts because this is where the most rainfall is going to be falling over the next several days here. And I wish... Okay, there we go. I'm able to capture the side of that. So we can see for Oregon, for Washington here, yeah, anywhere between 15 to 18 inches of rainfall. This is from the European Ensemble model. Okay, this is all 51 members put together to make it an average. And I'll tell you what, this is pretty darn concerning. Even in Northern California, look at this, 20 inches in some areas of rainfall and then... Even for the Sierras here, you're looking at 10 to even 20 inches, 20 inches of rainfall on the European Ensemble forecast. That is very alarming, to say the least. And when we actually look at the deterministic forecast, we can see it is highlighting something pretty similar as well. Let's see if we can bring that all the way through. Let's do this, total QPF. And go all the way out in time. And I'll tell you what, this is yucky. This is just terrible. Terrible, I'm telling you. Look it up here. 22 inches of rainfall in Northern California over the next 360 hours. Some areas in Sacramento may get 7 to 8 inches of rainfall. That's pretty alarming. And then look at over here in the Cascade Range and the lower elevations. Could get 30 inches of rainfall maybe up to 30 inches of rainfall in a matter of two weeks. Now, that is really, really bad. That is sickening to see. And then, of course, over much of, say, 
the Appalachians into the Corn Belt states here of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. You're looking at only about an inch to maybe an inch and three quarters of rainfall over the next 360 hours. But if you look at at the ensemble, which I really like very much, you can see those rainfall totals are going to be a whole lot lesser here anywhere between about an inch to maybe an inch and a quarter. And now that leads me into this here from the Climate Prediction Center, your six to 10 day temperature probability outlook here. Anything highlighted here in red is basically telling us that temperatures will likely be above average, especially in the dark red colors here over the deep south and the desert southwest. You're very likely to have well above average temperatures here, especially for Albuquerque, New Mexico, much of central and western Texas, you have a 90% chance that you will see above average temperatures. So pretty much at this point, you can probably say goodbye to any cold weather that you might otherwise expect. Temperatures will likely be below average here across the extreme northern tier of the United States and the northeast. But again, much of the nation here really blanketed in orange and red, and that's because large-scale ridging, that is going to be plaguing much of the Midwest and the Deep South. That continues all the way into the next 14 days here, as you can see with those temperatures that are going to likely be above average, unfortunately, for much of the Midwest and the Deep South. All right, so you can kind of see here how this changes with time. Well, not really changing with time because it's pretty much going to be about the same going forward here throughout the end of December. Now, when it comes to that rainfall probability outlook here, yeah, I'm pretty concerned, especially for Oregon, for Washington here, for much of the Pacific Northwest. But now look at California. There is a 80 to 90 percent chance that we will get above average rainfall in the form of rain or snow, depending on elevation here. So this is really welcoming good news here for California outside of the Thule fog where things have really dried out. But if you've been in the Thule fog where it's been drizzly and wet, well, we have been very fortunate to have that Thule fog around to keeping that moisture around instead of it evaporating and getting wasted. So good news there. And that continues to be the case. This is a six to 10 day outlook. And this is pretty much the eight to 14 day outlook. Again, remaining very wet and stormy across much of California through the end of December, whereas much of the Midwest, the Deep South, will remain below average in terms of rainfall or snowfall for the foreseeable future. Well, that is all that I have for you in today's weather forecast for Monday, December 25th, 2025. If you found this video very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, folks. I'm gonna try making these videos as often as I possibly can. However, there will be some exceptions to this. I won't have a video out for maybe Saturday morning. I might have something out because on the on Saturday afternoon, I have a Christmas party that I'm attending to. But because I upload these videos in the morning, that shouldn't get disrupted at all. So I'll try to have as much videos as I can out here on the YouTube channel every single morning at around 3 in the morning Pacific Standard Time, 6 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Love you guys, and I'll be back with you more soon with more weather updates.